something related to actors, like directors or writers or producers. But the problem with acting or directing or producing is there's not a lot of opportunities to really work, often because it's expensive or just no interest in your show, there's other people, there's always something in your way. What if I told you there's a way around it? Would you believe me? No. Well, of course you would. Why would I be up here giving an awesome intro? <laughs> now, the Toronto Fringe Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Girl Fringe Festival would be the answer to your prayers. Annually, this festival can host up to 4,000 artists in over 23 venues, <coughs> have almost 300 shows one year. Um, in order to create a wondrous environment, the French Festival strive to create an environment and, sorry if you can read that or if you can't, that facilitates an independent creative process And the opportunity <laughs> to perform <laughs> to a supporting audience. <laughs> Participants are off, they're selected through a lottery so that it's kept fair. Uh, festival producers have absolutely no control over the artistic content as long as it remains within legal boundaries. And the festivals always provide an easily accessible opportunity for all audiences and artists to participate. And most importantly, you keep 100% of your box office earnings because the French Festival is a non-profit organization. The festivals are all about accessibility. They strive to make it easy for artists to perform and audiences to enjoy. Free of restriction or regulation, anything can go in a fringe piece, except things that are illegal in a public space, such as rape or drug abuse. There are several categories you can apply for when applying for a fringe festival. These are Ontario, 60 or 60 or 90. Ontario uh, 60 or 90 means 60 or 90 minutes, around there, and all of your residents are from Ontario. Next you have national, and they can be from anywhere in Canada, 60 or 90. USA, 60 90, anywhere from the United States. And then there's international, 60 90, any, anywhere in the world. But you're saying, what if I can't act? Well, that's okay, because they also have dance. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have a show that's geared to maybe a younger audience. You can also try out for cringe kids. <laughs> 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 Which is obviously all geared towards younger audiences. Now, uh, if you're interested in ever submitting a show to the Fringe Festival, it's www.toronto.com. <laughs> and they will give you everything you need, all the information, all the forms, all the papers to apply for uh, a slot in the show.
there's several, several slots. Um, but what if the deadline's already passed? What if you can't submit a show, you can't participate because you have, you've just delayed it so long, it's a week away, you have nothing to do. There is still something you can do, and it's wank. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, wank. <laughs> As a, a way to reach out in the community, what Toronto Fringe Festival has done is they've built a big, huge outdoor stage. And what you can do, you go online, you sign up for a time slot, 30 minutes, this date, you get up, you have no electricity, no props, no technicians or anything, it's all what you bring. You just get up and you do your show. When you, you, anything you want, except for illegal activity and <laughs> hate propaganda. Because no one likes that. And, um, of course, the only drawback to the wank is no tickets, therefore no ticket sales, therefore no money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but don't be sad, be glad, because when you're sad, it is bad. <laughs> There's still a way for you to perform and make money, even if you're not in the show. For a $25 fee, you can become a buster at the Fringe Festival. For $25, they give you a license anywhere on the Fringe grounds. You can go and play your music, or dance, or sing, or... Just goof around as long as you got a hat on the floor in front of you. And people, you can keep every cent that you make doing that, essentially panhandling. But it's still fun. Because <laughs> they contribute, you know, to the, the ambience, the feel of the, the festival, because it's all about the artists and experiencing the art, whether or not it's in a theater or otherwise. Or, if you prefer something yet, the uh, Fringe Festival has a program called Double O Fringers. And this is a team of six to eight actors, fairly skilled actors, who go out into the community and create random hilarious happenings to promote the Fringe Festival. Um, and they'll just go around, they'll do goofy stuff, and people will think that it's actually happening. Of course, there may be some of you who are saying, that sounds like a lot of work, or I wish my would shut up so I can go get some pizza. Don't worry, <laughs> there will always be pizza, it's a renewable resource. <laughs> um, as with a lot of work, not to worry, at the end of a hard day on the art bank or performing your shows, you can go to the Fringe Club, which is a club in Toronto, which is dedicated pretty much to the Fringe Festival. It's a 12-day long party, pretty much. Lots of drinking, lots of beer, and everyone's invited. S staff, actors, audience, anyone who wants to come. How do I get there? Uh, there's a map online. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want, while you're there, you can mingle with all with the artists, with uh, VIPs of the club and things like that. It's just a great way to meet people. Uh, the plays often performed at this festival are often crazy and inventive and rarely mundane or similar to anything you've ever seen. For example, Mump and Smoot in Something. Uh, this is a play, this is one of them. Of course, we can't forget John Patterson's Puppets Who Kill. Death of General Wolf, The Kink in My Hair. Top Gun the Musical. <laughs> one Man Lord of the Rings. And how could we ever forget the epic hit. Uh-oh. Wrong marker. Say it. Nursery School Musical. How can we forget Nursery School Musical? <laughs> now, the Toronto French... Oh, I think this is the right one. Is Toronto French Festival is a member of CAFF, or CAF, which is the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals. This, this was a big, like a, what happened, first Fringe Festival, 1982, was in Edmonton, Alberta. And they employed these four strategies 
for <coughs> basic rules to ensure that all that it's the best experience for performers. It's hard over there. Um, basically, you get your stage, you get your venue. Um, I know I have it written down because I remember saying it. Um, they are selected through lottery. You get 100% of your ticket sales. You festival has no control over the show, and they must provide you with venue. That's what the CAF strives to do. And over the years, there have been 23 fringe festivals all over Canada to join the CAFF. That's more than any other country in the world. So there are other fringe festivals all over the world, such as Scotland, Australia, Britain, um, United States. Actually, many of the United States fringe festivals are a part of the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals just because of our awesome system. <laughs> um, So, I'm sorry, I've seemed to have lost my place. Anyway, some of the other CAF festivals include Frigid Fringe Festival in New York City, the Orlando International Fringe Festival in Orlando, Florida, Ottawa Fringe Festival, Regina International Fringe Festival, Windsor, Winnipeg Fringe Festival, Calgary Fringe Festival, and uh, Boulder, Colorado. These are just some. There's so many. So many more. Um, yeah. That's the Toronto Fringe Festival.